on the great I am. The great I am. Yahweh. A name for God. I see different signs for God and sometimes we have to think a lot. I've been thinking about a lot about that this week. Somebody texted me, it's good for you to teach this because some of us have history with Jehovah's Witnesses. And their emphasis on Jehovah God, Yahweh, Yahweh, okay. I have seen some sign Jehovah like this. Maybe I would use this sign with a Y. The Hebrew word Y-H-W-H. You understand there are no vowels. They have breath marks, but no vowels. So, how would they pronounce it? I don't know. I have seen some with the Y1 sign, but last week we talked about, we, what did we talk about? The I am. And what's that? That's God himself talking to who? To Moses. Where was Moses at the time? He was on the mountain with a burning bush. A big fire. I don't I don't know. And talk and God Moses says I'm worthless. But God says, I am with you. And Moses said, but what is your name? And he says, I am that I am. Tell them that I am has sent you. I am the Lord. And that word, L-O-R-D, Lord. We will see that more. The Lord God <coughs> says, my name is I am that I am. So, the great I am. God of heaven and earth. And most people look at this passage and see God speaking with Moses about his name. But understand, this isn't the first time that God's name has appeared in the Bible. The name Lord we see as God all throughout the Bible. So, this, the Hebrew words, Haywa, Haya, Asher, Haya. There are several different ways of spelling this, but Y-H-W-H, -H, or Yahweh. In Latin, it's transliterated as J-H-V-H, -H, or Jehovah. So we see the word Jehovah, it means the same as the Hebrew. But there's a little bit different letter choice. In Hebrew, there's no J. But in English, we don't use Y in the same way. Really, there are three or four languages that use this transliteration. Hebrew, Latin and Greek, and then English. So, 
all of them, the word choice and letter choice are different. So the sign I'm going to use most is Yahweh with a Y and God. English Bible, Hebrew Bible doesn't have the word Yahweh. You understand? We'll talk more about that later. We'll see this soon. But the word Yahweh throughout the Bible. Anytime in your Bible you see the name Lord, L O R D, with all capital letters, that's the name Yahweh. Now in your Bible, there's it's there a lot. Not only it's not the only name that God is known by. He has several other names. Elohim. That's the first name we see in Genesis chapter one. We see the name Elohim. And there are a few others. We're not going to discuss all of them, but Sometimes we see the word LORD, but it's not all caps. And usually that is representing the word Adonai, the ruler. We can sign it like this. So we could sign this LORD but the word is really Yahweh. So we go back to the beginning of the Bible today. The very first time that this name appears. If you have your Bibles, go ahead and open them to Genesis chapter 2. I'm going to have the verses up here, but I want you to see something. Go ahead and open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, I haven't given the verse yet. Don't read it yet. Just look at it. And try to count how many times you see L-O-R-D. <coughs> in chapter 2, in capital letters. <laughs> More than that, keep counting. More than that. Keep counting. That's close. That's close. Ah! Nope. That's, there's more than that. Got to go higher. That's what I said. 18? Wow. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Now, this morning I counted up quickly. I didn't really, I might have missed one. I didn't, I just counted quickly, but I counted 11. I counted 11. There might be 12. 
verse 17, I don't think that's the same thing. I don't think it's in verse 17. And maybe in a different translation, they, there might be more. In the King James Version, which is very close to copying the Hebrew words, a close copy of the Hebrew words, I believe that it appears 11 times. But the first time that we see it way is in chapter this is chapter 2. In chapter 1, we see God named, call, God called Elohim. But in chapter 2, I'm going to emphasize a few verses beginning with verse 4. The day the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now, why am I emphasizing this? We know God made the heavens and the earth. We know that. Well, I understand that, but... Elohim created the earth, not Yahweh. Yahweh is different than Elohim. Elohim God, but Yahweh is more specifically God. But we see here the Lord God. That God made the earth. Amen. God designed, created. That's what the Bible says. Caused the Big Bang, that God caused evolution to start. Caused. God didn't. In verse 5, For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. So there were no farmers, Bill, yet. There was no man to till the ground. So, did that mean that there were trees? Yes. Was there grass? Yes. Was there fruit? Yes. Were they man-made? No. God made them. Now, God made us and he said, we need a man to take care of it. Verse 7 is very important. And the Lord God formed out of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, the first time CPR is ever used in history is right here. He did 
chest compressions right here. And out of, the, out of the, the dust. And he breathed on him, and the breath of God gave man what? A soul different than any other creature. Do animals have souls? No. Do trees have souls? The green people say yes. Plants have feelings. No. There's no soul. They don't have soul. They do have responses, but they don't have soul. Humans have a soul, and that is different. God designed it that way. God made us that way. God determined us that way. Next, verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. So all of these, who did all of these things? God. Yahweh. <coughs> you see this word, L-O-R-D. All these things were done by God, yes, but specifically Yahweh did this. This is what the Bible says. So, understand. Okay, okay Mark. That's great. What's the point? It's very important that as we talk more about who God is, that we define what that means. He is God the Creator. We don't call him Yahweh of creation, but we see he did do he did create. He did make everything. So it's important that we recognize and understand where we begin. To understand the end, we must understand the beginning. So we know the story about what happened next, right? I'm not going to spoil it for you. Right. He took the rib and made woman. And then what happened next? Sin. And what happened with sin? They had temptation. That's important. Right? The devil tempted them. And we had acceptance of that temptation and then decided to disobey God. So that was a decision to disobey God caused separation from God. So they lost... Paradise, the old book, Paradise Lost by John Milton. It's a story about Adam and Eve. They lost their perfection. They lost the wonderful garden. Now, man is separated from God. And man still worshiped God. We see that in the book of Genesis with Abel and Cain. They went to worship God. God still cared about humans. God had a plan to reunite humanity to himself again. And next time we talk about Yahweh, And you look through the book of Genesis, and I did that this morning. 
looking for every time I see LORD. And my search engine is limited to a thousand hits. And there were more than that in the book of Genesis. So one page, 300, one had 500. There were a lot, but we're going to focus on the several times in the Old Testament when God's name is used with another name. Before Moses. And where does that happen? In Genesis. Anybody know? Go to chapter 22. This is before Moses, yes. So if you look at it on the timeline, I'll just give you a brief explanation. You have the cross here with Jesus on it around 30 A.D. And then from this point on, back to the beginning of time. 4,000, 5,000 B.C. That's the time of Adam. B.C., before Christ. 4,000 B.C. I'll just use that number anyway. Adam and Eve. Two thousand five hundred B.C. was Noah. Then you had thousand, then several, a couple thousand years after that, you had Abraham. Abraham lived in the land of Ur, and he moved to Terah, and God called him to go there in. Genesis and God obeyed and he went and he was 70 years old when he decided to follow God. God made him a promise that his seed would be greater than the stars in heaven and more than numerous than the sand of the of the ocean. He said, "Okay. How? My wife has never been pregnant. She's 65." But God called them and since they were old they decided that God that Abraham would marry the servant girl and gave birth to Ishmael. And then the angel came and told Sarah that she would be pregnant. And she laughed at that. And the angel said, all right, we're going to call, you're going to call your son laughter, Isaac. Isaac means laughter. 
you will laugh. So a year later, she gave birth to a son and named him Isaac. That means laughter. And she was very joyful because she was 90 years old and she had a baby. Later, how many years later, but Genesis chapter 22 happens. God comes to test Abraham's faith in Genesis 22, and God tells Abraham what to do. Take your son. Which son? Your only son. Now, Abraham had another son named Ishmael. God didn't see him as Abraham's lineage, but God gave him Ishmael. He blessed Ishmael, but they weren't of the same line. So, take your son, your only son, Isaac, and whom you love, and get thee into the land of Moriah. Now, we have a map. Just wait. And offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. <coughs> and Abraham said, hold on a minute. I don't think I heard you right, God. Tell me that again. No, you heard me right. Go. Okay, I'll go. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us that Abraham believed if he killed his son, God could raise him back to life. Abraham believed that. He said, Yes, sir, I will do that. And so he took Isaac and started on this trip. They walked for three days, over three days. And Abraham saw the place. And where was the place? Mount Moriah. Here's Bethlehem. Here's Gibeon. Here's Jerusalem. This is, in Abraham's time, was there a city called Jerusalem? Not called Jerusalem. But it was called something different. Salem. It was called Salem. And there was a king who lived there. And what was his name? That's a story for another day. Never mind. But if you're curious, go home and look and see who the king of Salem was. So Abraham went and said, Where, where Lord? On the mountain. And so he went up the mountain and he started to set up the altar. Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and said, Come on, Isaac, help me carry the wood. He laid it. So he took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. So he put the wood on Isaac, said, You carry this. You know, Abraham was old. Or, we don't know how old Isaac was, but he was old enough to carry wood. So, 10 or 12, I don't know. And he took the fire in his hand. A torch. He didn't carry the in his hand, but he, he took a torch. 
and one other thing, a knife. And they went, both of them together, and they left the servants behind. You stay there, we'll go worship and come back. And the, they went, both of them together, and Isaac spoke into Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And Abraham said, Here I am, my son. And he said, He's obviously an observant boy. He said, I see the fire. I see the wood. Where's the lamb? Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both went, both of them together. Now, let's emphasize one word here. Provide. Hebrew word is gyre. And most of the time in the Bible, this is used to mean see, appear, look. It, here it means provide. It means God will feed, will take care of it. God will see that it's done. So Abraham said, God will provide, will take care of it. So why are we emphasizing that word? We'll see soon. So they came to the place where God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son. How old was Isaac? Maybe 10 or 12? Abraham was strong enough to take him, his son, He took his son and put him down and tied him up on the altar, on the wood. Now I have a hard enough time pitying my son when, they, when they're crying. It hurts me. I cannot imagine what Abraham went through at that time. I can't imagine. I can picture it in my mind, but how he could do that, I will never understand. Maybe Isaac was willing. Oh, this is a cool game. Maybe he understood that God told Abraham to do that. I don't know, but I doubt it. I doubt that he was willing to lay there. Otherwise, he wouldn't have needed to be tied up. So that means that he wasn't willing. But anyway, he put him, he tied him up. And he stretched forth his and, and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the Lord called to him out of heaven and said Abraham Abraham and that's why some people sign Abraham like this so he took his hand and he said yes here am I you don't want me to do you want me to do this or not I'm ready to do you want me to do it? And now you're telling me, now what, do I have to start again? And God said, no, no, no. Don't kill your, don't kill your 
anything to him. Now I know that thou fearest God, has not withheld and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. It's, it's a hard story. And people ask me, well, Mark, why did God tell Abraham to do that? There are a few reasons. A reason. was from Ur. Fired human sacrifice. To please Now, when Abraham was told to sacrifice his son, You're just like the other gods. I didn't know that. Whatever you told me to do. But God's point was that he said, no, he was not like the other gods. You were willing to, but I'm different. Other gods would have said, go ahead and kill him. I want to save him. I am a God who saves. I am not a God who kills. Amen? I'm a God who provides. I am not a God who takes away. Amen? I'm a God who sees and takes care of it. I am not blind. I'm not a wooden idol that you just bow down in front of. I'm alive. And there's a difference. And Abraham said, wow, this God is different. And Abraham called the name of that place, what? Jehovah Jireh. Now, Hebrew, of course, doesn't use the word Jehovah. They call it Yahweh Jireh. Yahweh Yireh. Because in Hebrew, there's no J. Or, I am seen. I am seen. This is Lord provides, taken care of. God will take care of it. We'll see to it. Jehovah will see to this. In the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. In the mount of the Lord. God says, I will take care of it. So Mark, what's so important about that? I understand it, but no. You don't understand. This mountain is where? Moriah. And where is that?
the Temple Mount, where the temple would be built. That is Mount Moriah in Jerusalem. where God would take care of the sins of all people on the mountain called Calvary. And possibly that specific place where Abraham was ready to sacrifice, that exact same place, I've read through the stories of Genesis chapter 22, where does God show me? That, it's right there. And that's where his hand was stopped. And God says, I will provide. And Abraham understood that about, because he provided the ram. God provided the ram, but in the future he would provide the Lamb of God. Not just to satisfy Abraham. Not just to provide for the time being. He would offer a sacrifice for all generations, past and future, through his son, Jesus Christ. This is what Genesis chapter 22 says is prophesying about Jesus' death for us. Wow. I am that I am. I'll see to it. God says, I will take care of it. And there are several things that apply to us today. Do you spend time with I am? Think about Adam in the garden. God had designed Adam and they walked and said, walk with me in the garden. We can spend time together with God and we can still do that. Do you? The great I am is waiting for me to spend time with him. Who am I? I feel like Moses. Who am I? I'm worthless. I'm not worthy. As Christine sang this morning, I'm worthless. I must be led to the cross where I find my value, where I find what I cherish. God's, God desires t to have me with him. Wow. And we think it's no big deal. Oh, well, I'm not going to read the Bible today. I don't need to study the Bible today. I don't need to pray today. Ho-hum. Are you guilty? Number two. Will you go where I am sends you? Even if it's somewhere you don't want to go. You know, Abraham had traveled to Mount Moriah to sacrifice his son. He said, sure, I'll go. It's going to be a fun vacation. No. Abraham was grieved inside. I imagine... After three days of walking, he'd been thinking about, how was he going to get out of this? Lord, if it be will, your will.
imagine him walking with tears streaming down for his son, his young boy. I'm a hundred years old, better I could sacrifice myself, just kill me instead and let him live. God said, go. He said, okay, I'll go. I'll obey you. Why? He'll see to it. He'll take care of it. He'll provide. My wife and I moved here from Florida in 2015. Honestly, I didn't know what this place was like. We left, in, we left Florida, we got to Kansas, it was a different world. We left our family, our home, we left the sun to go where? Kansas? But we never felt bitter. We miss Florida, sure. But God, you tell me where to go. God says, I see you. Does God provide for me? Oh, yes. Far more than I can tell. Wow. I sometimes try to imagine if I'd stayed in Florida. Have you accepted I am's seeing to it? Do you accept that God is going to take care of you? He paid the price that you couldn't pay. He said to Abraham, stop. You don't have to give me your son. I'll take care of it. I'll give you mine. Wow. You don't have to sacrifice your son. I'll take care of it. I'll sacrifice my son. <coughs> have you accepted that? that Jesus paid the price for my sins? Or do you say, no, I'll deal with it later. Now I'm having fun in my life. I'll accept Jesus later. I'll do it later. I'll get serious about church. Later. Right now I'm having fun. I'll go to church later. I'll go to church when I'm old and I can't have fun anymore. I know God will forgive me. Except now. Today is the day of salvation. You never know. You could get hit in the street and die. You could get T-boned or pancaked. I don't want that for you, but it could happen. Just recently, I heard a story. It was crazy. Last week, somebody in Kansas, a guy had a rifle in the, gun of, in the back of his car with a dog, and the dog stepped on the gun and shot the guy and killed him. Number one, if you have a gun, don't keep it loaded. Duh. But it happened. Oh, I'm going to go hunting. I don't think today I'm going to die. He, you would never think that today you were going to die. You never know. Accept Jesus today. Number four, do you trust the I am to see to it? 
Do you trust the Lord to take care of you? You can pray every morning. Lord, I need you to take care of it. Whatever your burden is, whatever your need is, whatever your, your stressor, whatever is messing your life up, whatever your problem is, whatever your trouble is, or your thought, Lord, take care of it. His name is Jehovah Jireh. God takes care of it. So, that's dumb to say, I don't need God. I'll take care of it myself. Stop trusting in yourself. Trust in the Lord to take care of, of it for you. Put your life in His hands. Lord, I trust you. Lord, you can take care of it. You will see me and you will take care of me and provide for me. You are Jehovah Jireh. We don't do that. We should. I encourage you to take the Bible seriously. God is there for you. Three or four thousand years ago, but the, ver the uh, message is still good. He wants to take care of you. We're going to stop here and close with prayer. And I pray that the Lord will convict your heart. And will work on me and help me, first of all, to spend more time with him. Because I need to. To go where he sends me and to accept his son who, who paid the price for me and forth to trust in him to take care of me. I encourage you to take this seriously. Take time today and think about this the, during the invitation time. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, you are so good. Even in the worst story, you told Abraham, go kill your son. And then you said, no, I am good. I'm different. All those other gods, they're evil. Not me. I'm good. I'm different. I will provide. I'm the creator. <coughs> Lord, I pray that we will trust you. I thank you for making me. You designed me the way I am with all my flaws. You made me out of a lump of clay. So I say, yes, I will do what you want. I will go where you call me. I will spend time with you, the creator of the universe. I will sacrifice whatever it takes for you. I thank you in Jesus' name.